Okay, my name's Bill Tucker. I live here on South Street in Butte Falls. Was living in Eagle Point, and I worked with Bob Moore, the chief of police, with the police department in Eagle Point when I lived there uh, for several years. And then I got an opportunity I, to get a better paying job because I still had kids at home at that time. And so I took the job and it was with Dwayne Burton Logging and I was their foreman for 15, 16 years and that's what brought me into Butte Falls and I got tired of the driving every day from Eagle Point to Butte Falls and out to the woods where we were working. So I just thought, well, I'll just move up here. So that's when I, I moved up here. Never had a problem getting along with any and everybody even. And when I was, I come up here and then they was looking for a, police officer up here so at that time they it was advertised as a marshal and just for the heck of it I put my name in it and darn if they didn't have me come in and they they put me to work so that's how I got started as the marshal up here in Butte Falls and well when I first started it was pretty rough because for whatever reason the especially the high school kids they had no use for a police officer at, at all. They had been pretty well picked on, I guess you could say, uh, by law enforcement prior to me coming up. And it took me the first six or eight months up here before I could even talk with the kids. But now the kids all, I got to where the kids all called me by my first name. They didn't look at me as a police officer. They just looked at me as one of the townspeople here. And they needed something to, some advice or something because I was always into work, woodworking and building different things of different kinds including houses and and they just figured I was smart enough that I could answer their question I guess so that's got what got me started here but I made it a point that after everybody else started kind of cooling down at at night and, and getting ready to go to bed for the next day that's when I would appear and then back in the Back in when I was here, I didn't drive around in a car all the time. I'd take my flashlight and I'd walk the alleys and walk all over town. And I would walk up on different situations that real unexpected because nobody ever did those kind of things. What? And that's, that's why I got along with everybody. And I would give everybody, when I told them, I'd get them have to write them a citation or something, I'd give them a choice. I said, well, I can do one or two things here. What would you like for me to do? So I'd give them a choice and they, you're gonna let me choose? And I said, yeah, if you want to, otherwise I'll do what I want to. So they'd always pick the lesser of the two evils, so to speak, and, and that's, that's the way I, and I just, all through the years that I was here, that's, and I just got along with people so much that I had no problems whatsoever by the second year that I was here, there was no problems that I had at all. So that's when we had the first murder here in town. And then, well, to this day, it's the only one that exists on the books here in town. And it was up on the hillside, just about a, maybe a half a mile out of town at the most, up on the hillside back of town right here. I knew exactly where it was and knew the company that was up there, which was Medco back in those days. and. Uh, I went up there and and uh, sure enough, the guy was, he was just sitting under a shade tree and I pulled up and I hollered at him and I said, you, Dwight, you realize I gotta come up and get you? And he says, yeah, I've been waiting for you. And I said, are you gonna, do I need my gun or anything? No. So I just got out of my car and I said, well, you come on down here. And then I asked him where his revolver was that he'd shot with. And he said, it's in my lunch bucket. And I said, well, you sit down here in the back seat of my car. And I said, I'm gonna go get it. And he said, okay. So he just sat down in the back seat of the car and we were sitting there cause I could hear the state police and the county on my radio all on their way. And it was in the county jurisdiction realistically. So I just waited till two of the sheriff's departments finally found their way in there. They was having a terrible time finding their way, which little road goes up to where. <laughs> and 
they finally come in there and then I just turned him over to them and that was the end of that. So. Was it a, a Medco employee? Yes. Was it a Medco conflict? Yes. It, it the the you? boss was, in his opinion, the boss was always picking on him and, and he was a real nice guy and he wasn't deserving any being picked on by anybody because he was one of the hardest workers they had at the time. And that's the reason we got along always together. Plus he was a neighbor, he's only lived two houses away from me and that's another reason I had no problems with him whatsoever. So it, it turned out real good for me. So, and, but it was a strange thing. There was never not one thing mentioned in the Medford paper about the Butte Falls Police Department that the Sheriff's Department got all the credit for it. <laughs> so <laughs> I never did figure that out. So, a few years back, they, they started here in the U.S. started, the Agricultural Department started what they called an AmeriCorps system, which consisted of small groups. In fact, there was, there was nine college students in each group and they were wanting them to go around to different places to learn different types of work and how you do this, how you do that and everything. And um, for whatever reason, I got picked out for, to supervise. The town got grants, you could get a grant and we put in for it and we got two different times. We got a, a grants and both times while I was there, the group supervisor and uh, we done all of the improvements around the town of Butte Falls, which wasn't, it was done through a grant, so it didn't cost Butte Falls anything for us to do all that. We went through and we started out, we just went to the perimeter of the fence here. We're in the Guinness World Book of Records. We're the only town in the U.S. that's totally fenced and cattle guard to keep the livestock out. Cause we're in the middle of the forest lands where they have livestock grazing all in the summer months and we started out we rebuilt the whole fence around the outside of the town and those type of things and then at that time also ginger springs is where our springs come up from on the our water comes from on the side of the hill and it was just open and so we was always getting criticized by the state because the public water had tribulation in it so we just went up and got it all set up and then we got a contractor in here and dug out the spring so we could get all the dirt away from them, op open them up so they flowed better and then put concrete domes over the springs. So then the cattle and stuff couldn't get into it. So then our water, now we've got the purest water in the U.S. <laughs> so, and they bottle it, now they bottle it and sell it all over the place here. It's, I don't know where all they, they take it clear right down in the Bay Area and it's gone, it goes all over, so. I think we got a, a gift of two bottles earlier today. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> so, yeah. They're pretty proud of their water. Yeah. Well, I think what always comes to my mind is the fact that I got my foot in the door, so to speak, with the, with the teenager group, the kids in the school group and even and I used to go down in the year when the school started back up and they had a new kindergarten class coming in. I'd take little American flags and I'd take a little card with the American Allegiance on it down and give all the little kids before they started their classes, I'd give them all a flag and these little Pledge of Allegiance and stuff like that. And I think that's the reason that I got to where I got along with all the kids is because most of them, time they grew up, I was still here and they knew who I was and all this and that's the reason everybody when knows where I go they just hi Bill, hi Bill and then, I think that's, I just mixed in with them and tried to work with them and be part of the group, I guess. Well thank you very much for your story. Thank you for asking.